Hi guys, welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. Hope you're all okay. Uh, it's another week on, so what can we show you? What are we going to do? I'm um, going to look at a thing that we helped develop probably when I started here, okay? So my background before I started here, I used to work as a kitchen maker, bespoke furniture maker, joinery. We do lots of different jobs. Um, we don't go out and have to fit stuff on site. Now, when I worked there, when I had a home set of tools, that was my best stuff. A workshop set of tools, they never left the workshop. My on-site set of tools, those were all the things that went out. So they were the chiddles then, if you like, plain blades that if you dropped it on the floor, you kind of went, oh well. My good sets, no, I keep hold of. Didn't want to take those out of the workshop. The workshop had a wooden floor, you've got a workbench, you haven't got those hard surfaces. The minute you go out on site or anything like that, can be a little bit more off-putting if you drop anything on the floor. So a chisel or a plane blade, if you drop it, not good. Likewise, you've got those hard surfaces out on site, your concrete blocks and stuff. And I know with fitting kitchens, sort of trying to pair something in, get it in, fit it around the plaster, or you've got to take a little bit of plaster off the wall. That wood chisel occasionally got used. And, you know, I'm a bit like some of you. You wouldn't think so, okay? Now, so we're going to look at a way of possibly restoring those edges also thinking about those guys that go out on site. Now, when I started here, it became quite a shock that my customers come into the shop, how do you show up in a chisel? Or how do you get to that state? And these were guys that were working with these tools day in, day out. I can remember some guys even paying to have someone else sharpen their tools every weekend, which I was a bit horrified about. So we developed a product at that sort of point that they could put in the van, get it out, sharpen something, put it away safely. We've done quite a bit on sharpening lately. So we've looked at certain things. So let's just slide these in. So this is my water stones. Okay. Then if you just go overhead a minute, it's hopefully going to show you. Okay. Now, my water stones never left the workshop. Okay. My water stones stayed in the workshop. I refused to take them out on site for the same reason as that chisel blade. If we dropped it on the floor, you're going to chip it. Now, I've seen some of the builder's vans that we used to have turn up at work around the shop. And quite amazing. I can't imagine throwing these in the back. Throw might be the operative word. So these two water stones give you the scenario of the problems. Water stones are semi-frayable. They will get damaged. So this has got a crack that runs all the way across here. Okay, not good. This one got dropped big chip out the corner there's also a floor that runs across here so they need a bit of looking after you don't want to drop them on the floor i can't imagine having this on a building site you, you could come back one morning and find that it's in the wall with cement all the way around it it looks a bit like a brick so remove those likewise we did the scary sharpening a brazier paper stuck on a glass plate i'm not going to throw that in the back of the van either Okay, so it's a little bit risky of things that maybe you want to sharpen with that you want to take out on site. Or there is the, the people, if you like, that I do a bit of home DIY, I want to sharpen a chisel, I don't need to take it to that level. You know, I don't really need it to be what's the easiest way I can sharpen something without going a bit too over the top. Even with the background of the people we've got in here, we sharpen different ways to a degree. Um, so who have we got in here this afternoon? We've got Ben doing the camera stuff. All right, we've got Craig doing your questions for us. As we've said, this is live. So if you have any questions, we'd love to hear about them, okay? Um, the difference even between me and Craig, and he's probably going to sit there going, oh, no, no, okay. He wouldn't sharpen on water stones. He'd never go to 6,000 grit. He'd diamond stone or something. That'd be good enough. Different things, okay? Depends what you want to do. So for some of you, your home DIYs, wise, you want to be able to sharpen your hand plate and your chisel, get it to a good edge, without too much fuss and palaver. Others of you, I go out on site, I'm moving about, I need something I could store in the van or take with me. It's portable, not going to get damaged. So our glass plate and our water stones, they don't really come into it, going to lose those. Okay. So next thing we need, kind of something to sharpen. So... Then let's just go over to camera four for me. Okay, so this is one of my chisels from home. All right. It's a bit shocking, I know. This is the one that does the things where I've got the plaster work or I might have to pair something in. It's, it's a little bit beaten up, okay? 
it summarizes beautifully the problems we can have. All right, yeah, I've got things like that. Hem playing blade. All right, I borrowed. So this is the blade. The chip breaker's still in the back. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Okay, so my blade. So we're gonna get over, we're gonna sharpen those, touch those up. Now, my plain blade, if I can just take this apart. So Ben, you probably wanna come back over to camera three for me, overhead look. All right, just gonna take it apart. So that's all blade. So our chip breaker, we don't need the chip breaker. Now our blade on here, this has been hand sharpened by eye. Now, literally, in reality, you're putting it on a board, you're trying to find where you're sharpening, trying to find your angle. Not easy, okay? And to be able to run everything back and forwards and keep that angle, you've almost got to lock your wrist out. Try and keep a repetitive angle of what you're doing. It is not easy. So, Ben, if you drop over to camera two for me, what tends to happen when you sharpen, you tend to rock things, how you're trying to stretch. This blade... Beautiful, if I go right back over to four, hopefully. So where we are. The cutting edge on here is curved. It's not flat, not hollow. Now we did a Tormic video last week and went over the fact of having a hollow bevel we can, okay, so you can motor power it. We're gonna do this by hand, okay? But we've got to get rid of that curve. How does that curve work in reality? You just seen what I said about how your angle moves with moving your hands back and forwards, okay? Then, Overhead camera for me, okay? Gonna bring this in, okay? And here we have a cutout bit on the bit of MDF. So this is the back of your plane, your frog, which is what your blade sits on inside your plane. Front of your plane, your knobs on the front, your handle back here, okay? You've got this cutout of your angle, of your frog angle, and this actually is the same angle that you do have in your frog. Oh, plane blade, if we take what we have now, there it is, it's beveled down. So cutting edge, this side. Curve at the moment, it's coming over, sitting there. So we're gonna enlarge it to make it easier. There it is, okay, our plane blade. It has a curved edge, lots of little multi-facets because as you tried sharpening it, you're rocking as you go back and forwards. All right? So you end up lots of little facets. You deviate away from your angle you really want. It will still cut to a degree. So if we have our piece of timber, you're feeding this in, you find your blade, you bring it forward enough to find your cut. So the cutting tip, where the piece of wood now touches, it's got a cut. It will cut because we can sharpen an edge on it. But also then you get this scenario problem. Now I'm just gonna move my hands back. So we're coming to here. Now do you think we have a curving behind the blade and it's getting bigger? It will actually push the piece of wood off. Look what the piece of wood does. So you start to take a cut. Now, do you bet it there? We're not actually cutting now, it's pushing the plane upwards. So what do you do? You wind the blade forward a bit more. Take a heavier cut and make it cut. All you then do is take a big heavy shaving. The next point, you plane your piece of wood up, you almost get a banana. You don't get a straight shape. So we need to get rid of this curve because at the moment it causes everything to rock. So in reality, our blade, we need to be able to, let's lose our bit of tape. There's our blade, this is exactly the same shape. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of that bit that's got the rock. Then from there, we've got our 25 degree angle. We can sharpen these little points back as we go, make it repetitive. So actually you're getting something as a sharp cutting edge. So as we sharpen, we get two angles now we have 25 and a 30 degree cutting edge. We've done that in some of the other videos as well. But that will give us a nice sharp point with nothing in behind affecting what's happening. So the difference of that, this line, quite a lot of material, okay? I think you can see that just about good, all right? So hoping this doesn't sort of deter you too much. But it's giving you the emphasis on how important this is to get away from that. A curved blade doesn't work for you effectively. It's going to actually possibly cause you more problems. And some people I know when we've had them in the shop can't understand why this won't cut. 
And I see this time and time again, okay? It's quite worrying, the facts of, okay, so we're going to lose our bits. Get that out of the way. All right, so what we're going to use then. So oh, when I started here, I had this thing, okay? So then you go, I don't know, good. So we have a sharpening board I made up. This holds my water stones, rubber holder. My water stone fits in here. I had simple honing guide, put it in. I can set up an angle. Make it repetitive is the next important thing, okay? Well, this got seen at some point. And like I said, this is something I had when I started before, even coming here. Made it easy to sharpen things with. So this got seen at some point. And became this, all right? So this is the wider sharpening station. So basically, my sharpening station that I had, I used with water stains. The problem with the water stains, like we've already said, first of all, if I'm taking it out on site or I want it to be portable, it isn't. Okay, the water stones are susceptible to that damage. So in here we have the diamond stone. We're going to lose that. Okay, just take it out a second. On the board, then, what do we have? Let's start the underside. We have four rubber non-slip feet. The main board, the white material, is a material called formalic. It is a hard, non-porous plastic. All right? The plastic doesn't warp, flex, bend, absorb moisture. It's stable. That's quite an important part. So if you put a sharpening station on a piece of MDF, it will absorb the moisture, especially if you're using water stones. Okay? Craig's got a question. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, I've got a question from Martin, Jason. Um, can you tell us how to eliminate lines with the plane? How are you, sorry? Eliminate the lines you get when you're playing. The lines? Mm. All right, as in you're getting grooves in the bone? Okay, so if you're getting grooves in your timber when you're cutting, you've got a chip in the cutting edge. As simple as that. So my chisel will emphasize this beautifully. Then just back to four, I think. Okay. This one here, we have lots of little nicks if I run my fingertips through here, okay? Each of those little chips, okay, will cause problems, all right? So there's our chisel, our plane blade as well. I think you're gonna find, okay, that this has got a couple of little chips on here, okay? Now, the best way I can feel that is to run my thumbnail along there, but go very careful. Let's bring me back in a bit, look, okay? So I can feel them just by doing that. I'm running my nail, not my fingertip. That's quite an important part. But all those little chips will affect what you're going to get. So if you're cutting your piece of material as you would, you're going down the grain, and you're getting a little line left after, there's a damage point to the blade. If you want to lose that, you're going to get a better edge. So you don't want that serration in there, okay? So that's quite an important part. We can get rid of those chips and dents. Okay, so go back to our board a second. So we've said it's nice, hard, formalic plastic. We have a machine surface, one side, a little bit the other, okay? This side, okay? And let's think, Ben, uh, if we go, come a tree for me. Fantastic, okay? Now we've used this a little bit in here. I'm starting to wear the writing and the instructions off because we use it. This says planes, 180 degrees, Chisels, and it actually even says it in the way you're going to read it, okay? So if you read it correctly and it's not upside down, you know you're using the right side for what we're doing, okay? That makes sense? So back onto there, back to your overhead bend, thanks. So we have a recess. This is designed to fit diamond stone. Why diamond stone? Because, first of all, it will stay flat. So if you're out on site, you haven't got to flatten it. If you drop it, yes, you might kill the metal corner over if you throw it on the floor hard enough, but you're not gonna break it, okay? So it'll stay flatter. You don't, you don't have to have a lubricant. It's better to have something to help lubricate it, but water's quite easy to find in most places, okay? So even a little bit of water will work. Doesn't matter if it freezes, water stone, you'll crack it. So actually, it's quite portable and durable, which is one of the things we wanted that we could have something that appealed to lots of people. Okay, made it user friendly. So, other side of here, leather strop. So, Sweeney Todd's Barbershop, we've all seen the razor blade, the cutthroat. It's amazing that they actually, time didn't even sharpen something. They might just rehone it on the leather strop, buff it up. 
So leather straps are really important for this. They, for weirdly, when I was at college, we never had leather strap, and it was something we never covered. I never had one when I worked before coming here. So quite interesting that leather straps are coming back in in fashion and making a big difference. I think it makes an immense difference to getting rid of that little wire edge on the back of it. So, so far, I've got an idea of what we have. Diamond stone, okay? It's double-sided. We have thousand grit. Ben, can you just go, and this will be upside down, I think, for the guys. Okay, so this is thousand grit. You can see the structure on there as well. If I flip it over, we have 400, okay? So 400 there, thousand on there, lovely. Now, the cross-hatching structure of the diamond section, the diamonds are actually where the diamond plate is, if you like, okay? So the grooves in between those are allowing the material that we cut off to be flushed away with water or a lapping fluid. So they're clearance for the waste material. So that's why you get that kind of structure, really important in waste. Back to the overhead then. So we have our rubber grip plate and we have our diamond stone. Okay, so hopefully you've got an idea of what the board does a little bit. Just gonna do last little bit. Now we said about hand planes and chisels. We've also got our cutouts they relate to a protrusion length that we're going to generate, okay? So, up to there, that explains the board. Craig's got another question, okay? How are we doing? Yeah, just a follow-on from Martin's question, really. Okay. What he meant was not the lines with the chip from the blade, the lines you get from the corner of the each side of the blade. Okay. When planing. Okay. So, if we sharpen our blade dead flat and dead square across the front, okay? All right, so then overhead, please. Okay, so if this is dead flat, the corner points will catch. You'll get what they class actually in the trade as a tram line. Okay, so we can add a little bit of camber. So, in what is camber? We're going to make the blade slightly curved, fractionally, not a lot. You can even actually go to a far extreme. Let's see what I've got up on here. Oh. There's one. Okay. If you were roughening down material and want to remove stock rapidly, you could have what's classed as a scrub blade. Okay. Now, this has got a lot of curve. Okay. Think, Ben, actually, let's just go just to confuse you. Okay. Look at that. So, what's that about? It's actually taking a scallop out of the timber as you're planing with it. Quite quick, very effective to do, fast cutting. So therefore, a scrub blade has a lot more camber on it than we would put on with a normal hand plane, okay? So, okay, our diamond, we're gonna go 400 grit, okay? So I've turned it over, got the 400 facing me there, okay. So diamond stone, like we said, is a bit more durable if you're gonna move about a bit a lot more. Next thing then, honing guide, okay? So this I know has been around for, it seems like forever. This I know is an Eclipse style honing guide. They were the original company probably to come out with this, I reckon probably late 60s, all right? It's been around for donkey's years. There's probably thousands of these satin sheds that people just, you know, you might have one, okay? It does have some writing on the side, then number four, please, okay? So it has instructions on the side. You might need a magnifying glass. We're all getting older. We have block screw. Turn it round. We have wheel in between. So that's what we write on. We have dual plates to sit things like your hand planes on. Lower down, we have what's going to grip your chisel. Okay. Lock screw on the side. So if we move any of this, we open or close the jaws. Okay. Really basic honing guide. Now, when we designed the board and my sharpening station, this is what I started with years ago. Just a simple honing guide. It got me through those things. Now, I learned to freehand sharpen, but it's that aspect you start to add a curve down the length of your blade, which I don't want. I want something quick, easy, and repeatable, okay? So next thing we are sharpening, why? It's safer, easier to do the job, cleaner, that's cleaning up. That's a brazier paper. You're not going to tear the grain as much. You'll use less effort. All those little factors come into why you want a sharp blade. Because at the moment, 
I could cycle home on this almost. I'm not going to try. And I do cycle to work, which is, a bit, you know, okay. This is, and the chisel, even worse. Okay. But we need to get them sharp to do the job. So our honing guide, we've got our screw, our plane blade, we're going to put in upside down. Now, okay, bear with me. We need one last little thing. Just to make life easier. The marker pen, okay? Um, these two are sat here laughing because they know that normally I've always got a marker pen, all right? I'm gonna color this in. Now my aim with this, and I'll go back to camera four in a sec, all right, is the fact that, and I'll bring that up a little bit, let's see if we can get you better, okay? By highlighting, you can see what's going on. First thing I want to do now is get that back to a nice, clean bevel. One angle, 25 degrees as a primary grind, okay? Now, one of the things I was asked a while back, and there, okay, then we're leaving there. I'm going to jack this up a little bit. Now, to, to work now with the overhead camera, this is in the middle of the bench. Normally, I'll pull it to me so I can overhang it off the side of the bench, make it easier for this, okay? I've just put the chisel handle underneath. We can put our plane blade, cutting face, all right? It's downwards, okay? Under there, back to there. This is the back of it, up to there. Slide it up to that stop. Now this is going to give us, and it's labeled 25 degrees. A 25 degree angle. So I'm coming up to that stop. That's given me a repeat length. One of the questions I asked a while back was, if you're having a flat bevel all the way through, why not just sharpen it to 30? You can sharpen it to 30. Now, this blade is traditional, if you like, Stanley record type plane. It's relatively thin. As things have got more advanced or metal become more readily available, your blades can end up a little bit thicker. So let's just grab one of the planes off the wall behind us. Try and show you that. Um, number four, Ben, sorry. Okay. Oh, let's move our pencil out of the way. Can you see a difference in the thickness there? Let's see if I can tilt things. Okay, you get an idea from that. Look. Quite different thicknesses. Newer one. All right, chunkier blade. So, and that's not the thickest blade on the market. So if it's thicker and you've got one bevel all the way down through, it's a lot more effort to remove it. Going to take you longer to remove all that material. So by having a primary bevel of 25 and then a sharpened edge of 30, takes less effort, quicker for you to sharpen. And then you go back to this stage, once in a blue moon, take it back to 25. So we've got our diamond stone, a little bit of lapping fluid, okay? Hopefully, turn our button down, there you go. That's gonna help flush this out. Now, make this look easy. Fingertips go on the top, all right? Well done, thanks, good. My thumbs are gonna go in underneath to there. They put pressure. Now I'm trying to keep my pressure equal, okay? So at the moment we're doing this almost, if you like, to get rid of any damage, get back to a nice clean bevel, we can cut along, okay? So gently back and forwards. Now if you look at the diamond stone, probably overhead, can you see this colour forming down on here? Let's see if I can give you an idea, okay? Nice black colour. That's what we're cutting off, rinsing away. Okay, bear with us, let's just get a little bit of blue roll. Right, there we go. Good, yeah. I've got a comment from Paul who says um, he's looking to replace possibly that type of honing guide because his wobbles a little bit. Okay. Now, and I said I make this look simple. This is all about control and concentration. If I'm going to pick this up, I don't do this. I can't do it one handed. You can't watch Tally and do this. As much as I'm trying to watch the screen and the camera in front of me, we're trying to concentrate. So I've already said, the minute I come into this, my hands are ready to go. Fingertips, equal. Pressure there. I keep my fingers in the same position either side. Not further over. So this is near the middle or near the edge, because that's going to pull. Got to get it equal. Before I start moving anywhere, I get it flat. Get my pressure nice and equal, then start to work with this, okay? Not too much pressure. Now, 
Other thing that you'll probably all find, you're naturally right or left-handed. Trying to get that equal takes a bit of pressure. Automatically, if you're naturally right-handed, you're more likely to put a bit more pressure. Little square can be good just to check if you're dead square. It's not going to matter if you're not 100% square for this, but it's all about trying to keep the pressure equal and feel what's happening on the roller. Um, now, this is something I hadn't thought about, but let's just see. Ben, can you just get a four for me? Okay, I'm into there. Now, that's not a diamond stain. I've got my roller. I can feel what happens there. I can feel if my angle is nice and equal and how that roll is working. The minute I start deviating, I can feel that move. I can even feel an edge. So all those little things play a part in how that works, okay? So quite an important part to get that pressure equal before you even start cutting or moving up and down this diamond stone. So fingertips back in, from back underneath. Got my position. Now I concentrate on getting pressures They're equal. My arms, okay, are equal as well. Um, ben, can you go to two a second? Okay, so my hands, the whole time now I'm doing this, got everything nice and equal there. Right, Ben, back to camera one now. Let's do an overall. You can see my body stance is working there. Next thing, and this is weird, I lean on the bench. Make sure it's something substantial because you don't want to lean on it and have the whole lot fall over. I lean on there. That takes my body weight. I can press equally. I can put pressure as I push away or as I pull back. Okay? So that's given us nice and equal pressure. I can feel that I'm not actually deviating either side. Okay? Right. We're getting there. Let's have a little bit of blue just to rinse that out again. So that lapping fluid, why? That will stop any corrosion, any rust. It also flushes the diamond stone out, gets us to do that job, okay? So, gonna keep moving. Up and down, do our bits, okay? So, nice and gently with our pressure. On the front of this in a second, we'll probably have a look in a sec. So Ben, just go back to camera one for me. Okay, look at how the arms are all working together, trying to keep that pressure equal. Now, that question about your lines at the moment, that's unimportant for the second. At the moment, we're working on getting back to a straight edge. Clean, no chips, no dents. So, camera four, we go to there for a second, okay. Ben's already ahead of me, okay? So, on there, okay, we've got, all right, bring it down a little bit. Nice silver edge, okay? Looks nice and clean on there, okay? Trying to get the focus now. It doesn't like focusing on something where, so, all right, it's a little bit ragged on the bottom. Lost most of our pen, okay? Just going to feel my fingertips again. Still got a little bit to go, okay? So, I've still got a tiny bit to get on here. But what we have got is a nice clean angle all the way down through. We've got our 25, we've got a little bit to go. So we go back to there, we stick with it, okay? Now the other indication that we're not quite at the front, there's no bear on the back, okay? Now, this isn't something you're going to need to do every time you sharpen your plane. This is about getting rid of the damage, dents, and chips. All right? So, as long as you look after your tools, it's going to work. So, now I can see on here, this is starting to get quite clogged. Lots of black. Okay, let me do. That looks better. Look at all this. Look. Need a bit more blue. All right? Clean it out again. Because by flushing it, it's rinsing away the metal particles that I'm cutting off. So our diamond stone is cutting that. The 400 grit is the more aggressive side. The 1000 grit is finer. So at the moment, we want to do the hard work. We're going to use the 400. All right, back and forwards. Hopefully, we're nearly there. Okay, working across the stone, 
if I was worried about wearing the stone, but diamond stones don't wear as much, I can always turn it round. Okay. Another feel, see what's happening. Starting to get a burr. Chips are nearly gone. Just do a last little bit on this. Well, like I said, this is the hard work. If you have something like a Tormac or a powered grinder of some type, we're going to look at bench grinders and sharpening in a couple of weeks. You could use that, but you've got to be careful. We'll explain that when we get to it. From here, back to there. Okay. Now we should have, let's clean everything up. Right, okay. I don't know if I can show you this. Let's try the trick we used the other week. Feeler gauge. Ooh, that one, I think. Hoping, all right, up in there, just starting to go. So, getting an edge there. So, just got a tiny burr which is stopping it drifting over. So we're pretty much up our front. Last little bit just to go. Okay. Now our hand pressure, we've tried to keep nice and equal at the moment, okay? Should be quite good there. I've got bear on the back. No one is sharpened now. So, Going to lift our board back up again just to give me a bit of access. I need to undo the honing guide. So, the screwdriver goes into the side. Undo, hopefully. Oh. This is 25, that's where we measured before. Going to come down to 30. So, this is going to give us our sharpening bevel edge at 30 degrees. So, onto there, we lock it off. Screwdriver is good, something like that. Don't go using your wood chisels, okay? So, that back hill, we need to turn the stone over, okay? At the moment, we are 25 degrees, 1,000 grit, 400. Then we're going to go to the 1,000 grit, get in the rubber holder, and do the 30. Now, I'm hoping, oh, we need to clean the edge for you, show you what we've got down on here. We want our pen. Just colouring the tip, so you can see where we are there, just colouring that in, got our mark, we're going to go back to camera four, hopefully, so you can see right, what we've done, okay? So you've got that edge, all right, look at that, okay? So the colour mark will give you an idea what we're doing now. On the back, we've got to do a little bit of work in a second as well. So we've turned the diamond stone over, okay? So we're now up to 1,000 grit. The finer side, okay? We've changed the bevel angle to 30. So we come back a little bit. So in relevance to my funny bit of card I cut out. Ben, can you do your, okay? Thanks. So 25 degrees is down through there, okay? 30 is now doing that little front bit, okay? I think you can see that there. Turn my pencil around, I can hold it better there. So you can see... 25, that's good, all right, with that, 30, we change our angle, okay, there, back to that, all right, so it does change a little bit, so we want to do that minute bit on the front edge, so everything's in there, again, fingertip pressure is important, fingers over the top, thumbs on the back, six swipes I've done, we just go back to four. We've already lost and we've got a lovely little line on the front. That's all I need. I don't need to do more than that. That's that's brilliant. Great. Okay. So we've got to do a little bit of work on here though. Okay. Undo. We need to do the back of the blade. We need to get something on here, get it dead flat. It's not too bad. Okay. Had a little bit of work in the past somewhere. I borrowed this, okay? So interesting to get a blade that's not brilliant. Okay, so we need to do the back. 
going to keep it flat, keep my fingertip pressure. Just want to do this bit first. Okay. This is going to get rid of that there. All right. Need to do a little bit more. Depends on what they've done with this. My chisel, I know, is going to lead a bit of work like this if we get to that, because it's going to be a little bit rounded on the front. So, back and forwards. Okay, that's better. Now, we've got a shine all the way along here. Okay? And again, you don't need to go so heavy when you're doing this every time. We go to camera four again, hopefully, Ben. Okay, you can see where I've just touched. Got a little bit to get this corner. So I'm just going to go back to that just for a second. We do there. Okay. Now, the reason for doing that, when we put the chip breaker under here, we want it to seat all the way across. So if it's not flat, it's not going to put pressure all the way across. Okay. Now, that's quite an important part to get that nice and flat, get rid of that burr. Now, Craig, you had that question from Martin about the fact of the tram lines. So we go back into here. Now I could have done this earlier, but I thought I'd show you what we're doing. So I'm resetting to the 30 degree bevel. Okay. Just going to tighten it up. Check it's flattened there. Okay. It's in exactly the same way as we did. We've got a little bit there now. A little bit working with our pen. Again, we're going to go back to camera four in a second, Ben, just so you can have a look and see what we're doing, because it's easier to show you. I've coloured the corners. Now, at the moment, this is probably, as a blade, I can think of what I might have on the bench that's nice and straight, pretty flat across the front. Okay, try to get down a bit. Okay. It's a little bit of curve. Might be good. Now, we go back to up there. I can deliberately now alter my pressure. How? Well, I can either physically push harder with my arm. I could, don't really want to take a fingertip off totally. My thumbs are still in underneath. But actually, I can press less by actually maybe taking a digit off. So I put one finger there, okay, which means my left hand will be pressing down more. Swap it over. Okay. So hopefully we've got rid of our pen mark, sorry, Ben, in each corner, okay? All right. So it will take that off. So just by varying your pressure a little bit, you can put a tiny little bit of camber either side of the blade. That will get rid of that tram line aspect. So in other words, the corners aren't catching. They're not digging in. Really easy to do, okay? Your plane blade doesn't need to be 100% flat. Do you think we've done that? I'm going to take the burr back off the edge that I would have produced. Okay. Next little bit on here then, lever strop. As I said, never used to do this, and it's weird. Why? What we've done now, we've sharpened this 30 degrees. We've got a wire edge that floats about. So, tiny piece of metal that's going up and down. The old boys used to do this on their hand. You break it off. You snap it off, possibly not good. So leather strops are better. So we've got a piece of treated leather, okay? Has to be treated in the right way, from what I understand for this. We have a polishing compound. So a soap, if you like. We can put a little bit on. Right down. Our blade, all right? We can work in two ways with this. Dead flat, cutting edge. So dead flat, and I pull it towards me. I start right at the top, pull it down through, keep my pressure, okay? Turn it over, bring it up, feel where that feels. Don't go trying to push into it, you will cut the leather. Okay, so get to there. Five or six swipes should be good. Now, I don't know where we are now. Let's have a look, Ben. Where can we go? About to four minutes. Let's just go down to there. Ooh, okay. Now we've actually got, if I can find my pencil. Got a pen, there's the pencil. Whiteboard, did that help us? Nah. Okay. So, on here we've got our cutting edge. You can see we've got that lovely little line on the front. Just down from here, really small bar. Doesn't need to be anything bigger yet. As you sharpen more, 
that will increase in size. When I get halfway across my plane blade, I go back to that 25, the heavy work, the grinding, if you like. Okay, we've got hopefully no chips coming up through. Okay, so that gets rid of all that damage. Get the back flow. Okay, now this will actually, I don't know if I want to do this. How many hairs have I got now? When did I last do this? Uh, advantage of not having courses, look. So we should, yeah, we'll do, okay. okay. All right, so lots of hair. So you can shave with it, um, which I don't know, haircut soon. I don't know if this is really going to do it right, but okay. So we've got our plane blade, okay. I can do jobs, all right, at work. All right, so we've done our hand plane, okay. Hopefully you can understand the aspect of trying to do and what we've done with it. So we're going to turn our board around, okay. Now, this was the beauty of this, because it gave you something, as we said, that you can travel with or put in your van or whatever. Honing guide, I'm going to wind it out. Our chisel, okay? My builder's chisel, okay? can go into there. Once I've got it located, and I find occasionally this can be a little bit fiddly. That's in there, okay? We're going to just go over to camera four. How much is it going to show? Right, okay. This is in the lower jaws underneath. I've turned the honing guide upside down, okay? Can't get it quite any more than that because we're going to lose it with where the handle hits the bench, okay? But it's in the lower jaws. The chisel's upside down where the roller is, so it'll be presented there in a minute, okay? You can see the top of the main jaws we were held on up on here. So that gets that bit. Right, okay. Back to our board, Ben. Prop it up so I've got a bit of height. Now, we're going to do the same thing. So I want 25. I'm hoping my chisel isn't going to take as long. But you never know, okay? So 25 degrees. So we set it as a primary average to get rid of all the damage. Diamond stone, coarse cut, 400 grit. And again, you can double check when you get to this stage. It says chisels on here. Makes life nice and simple. So this is going to do the hard work. Again, look at the fingertips working. You're, I could even maybe bring you around to there a bit, okay? Can they go together now? Can't do it one-handed. I might be using a smaller item. Fingers are there, thumbs are back on the back. I can feel everything. No rock. Oh, it works. Back and forwards, okay? Let's have a quick look on here. I'm going to bring it back to square so I can stand nicely at the bench. Little bit of flush, clean it out again. Oh my God, this could be a while. Look. Okay. See where we are. It's gonna take a bit of time this look, but let's give you a scenario where we are. We don't need to watch later. Then can we go to four for me please? You can see what we're doing. So we'd soon get back to the same state, exactly the same as we did with our hand plane. We'd knock that back, get it nice and clean, get rid of the chips. We can do the back, okay? So everything can be done, all right? I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. It'd be, it'd be lovely too, but it's gonna take a little bit of time, okay? I don't know if you wanna sit and watch me do 10 minutes of grinding on a chisel. We do the back of this, it's got a bit of grunt on it. This will clean off the uh, grit fill, the glue, the plaster, all those foreign materials that you seem to, you know. That's clean off paint if you stir the paint with it. I know a few chisels like that. So, soon get this back to being flat, okay? But ideally, top edge, I need to sharpen a lot more to get it back. But you get the scenario, this will do your chisels and your planks. Okay, you had questions of, will it do that? So this is number four, Ben. Smaller quarter inch chisel. Okay. So we can go smaller. So I'm going to wind the honing guide in. Slide my chisel in, all right? So bevels downwards, back to there. 
right? Quick grip at the moment, haven't tightened it. Gonna raise the board up, okay? All right, so got our quick grip on there. You can see we're holding. We've got our roller under there, quite nice there. This has already got quite a good bevel on it of 25. So all we're really gonna do now is sharpen the front edge to 30, okay? So we have our edge. You can see the honing, honing guide and how it grips that on those lower plates. So bring that back. Camera three, Ben. I'm gonna set it up now. So on here, chisels, 25, 30. It's different to the other side because where you mount into the jaws, here for the plane on the top, we'll lower down to hold the chisel. So the chisel's there, your plane is right up here. All right, I'm losing a bit of focus on the camera, but okay. So that's what makes a difference. So this length cannot be the same either end of the board. So we're gonna go 30. Lock it off, down, okay. So we've now got a 30 degree repeatable bevel. Now the joy with this is that magic word I've just used for you, repeatable. Easy, simple, no guesswork, okay? So in other words, you don't end up with that lovely rounded edge that won't cut, especially on your hand plane. So on there, this is trickier. So this goes almost back to Craig's second question you had about the fact that finds this rocks about. First thing now I've done, come onto there, get myself stable on here. That's me body stance as well as what we're trying to cut. Fingertips, still got to use both hands. So I position on the roller, okay? Now, Ben can go to two for a sec. Let's see where, so you can see a roller. This is quite easy to, if you get too much pressure, rock about on this one because there isn't such a big bearing surface to sit on when it makes contact with the diamond stone. That's quite an important part. Get position wise before you even start trying to move. Get yourself stable. Get your fingertip pressure equal. So we're going to turn it back round just a second. Ben can leave where we are, Ben. All right. So from there, I've got the holding guide. It's set on the board. On here, fingers got to come up, both hands. I put both fingers on, one way or another. I might overlap them. So it's on the front. I can get them on the side. Okay, but somewhere I've got to be able to get my pressure off both hands. The minute you try and do this one-handed, you're going to tilt it. So easy to do, but your you, arm almost counterbalances it out. So you've got to keep both fingers on there nice and equal, okay? So I'm gonna bring my board back so it's comfortable to there. We did do black, but let's do, because I know what's happening now. Okay, that one to the fingertips. This one takes concentration. Do you think it's not as wide as a chisel or a plain blade? There isn't the support we've already said here. So my natural reaction for this is I'm a bit more uncertain about this. I want to control it. So what's changed? What am I doing that's different to maybe we did with the wider chisel or the plain blade? I move a lot slower. Control it. Speed can be everything with something like this. You don't need to move rapidly. Okay. We have got, I'm hoping Ben, back to four. An edge, okay, got a little bit of an angle look, okay. So I can look at that and go, right, looks like I'm putting a bit too much pressure right-handed. Now, I'm naturally right-handed, so I might put more pressure on. So I could put a bit of pressure on my left fingertip, even it out, okay. But, and here's a good back for you, and it's amazing because we all look at a chisel and go, it's not crown quite square. That's not bad, look not dead level does it matter if it's fraction you know two or three degrees out of square for what you're doing you can notice when you're cutting with it okay so i'm in trouble now with the purest woodworkers that are gonna all right so we have a burr heavy one start off the top now at the moment where are we on here done a, a bad thing i'm gonna turn this over i want that thousand grit i'd like to be a bit finer okay Start at the top, I pull it down, pull it towards me, okay? Take the bear off, a couple of swipes, I won't need many. And I deliberately started off of the diamond stone at the top. 
So I'm not crushing the beer, especially on a small chisel. So then pull it back over. We can go back to our other stop. Now on here, I've deliberately dropped the handle right down to the board, position up, pull it towards me, okay? Go the other way. Okay, so this time the handle's clearing the side of the board. I don't want it over here, it's gonna push it up. It's gonna make contact with the diamond stone, you wear a mark in here, you get all grabby, I mean, no. Okay, so got to be up the side and flat when you're doing the back. Do not lift the back of a chisel. It needs to be dead flat to cut. If you start raising this, all right, then probably camera two maybe, all right, all right. If you come up here, and I'm exaggerating it for you, so the back of the chisel needs to be nice and flat. The minute you come up, you're gonna round the front tip off. The honing paste that we're using for this, the soap, is mildly abrasive. So it does act as a cutting compound, but polishes finer than what we're cutting with the stone. So pull it down to the other side, okay? You'll get, hopefully, something. No, we haven't done so far. I've managed to get away with it. Put the glasses on a bit. Let's have a look. Okay, so this one. Okay, that doesn't look bad. Got a shine on the front. Okay. Quite a nice sharp edge. Ooh, I wonder what we got in here. Oh, no, I can't do it in there. Like that. Sorry, I can't I can't sit on a workbench like that. Need something just to rest on. Piece of rock maple. So hoping that this will come off there. Okay. Clamp it down would be better. All right. Trying to alter my angle and stop the bit of wood moving as well on the bench now. A vice would be better. Okay. But it'll work, okay? So, it's all right. Um, but actually, quite a nice sharp edge, all right? Does take a little bit of finger about. I don't know how much we can see. We can see the color change and the angle change, which is good, okay? So, we've done chisel. You've shown me you how you can grind, okay? We've said about leather stock. Now, some of you might have Got a diamond stone, okay. This sort of thing you could buy separates. You might have your water stones and say, I'm quite happy with those, okay. Move things about after the different leather straps, okay. Then I uh, think we go, well, I'll make good, all right. I don't know where I can show you about it. They're slightly different sizes, okay. So these are new ones just in. This is uh, detachable. That's the magnets. So we have coarse leather strop, finer one. This is a one piece double sided. Okay. So that's the one I've been really using a little bit. So we have coarse side, fine side. What changes on this is the roughness of the leather. This is a bit coarser. This is similar to what we have on the sharpening station, a lot finer on the back. This has this lovely honing paste. All right. So you can get this. This is I think a bit oily, this. Okay. Probably not the right way of putting it on here, but it seems to work. Dab a little bit. This is the same compound that they use for razor blades. Um, these are all from France, so quite, if you like, quite local. Try and get in, okay? Work exactly the same. Now, the honing compound that we've got on there is finer than the blue one we do with the lever. So if you wanted a separate lever strop, like this on the sharpening station, you can have something like this, really good for this. It will polish it up, give you a really good edge, okay? I'm going to go finer, I turn it over, let's have a little bit of that because it's been probably a good week since I've played with this in here. Have a little bit on there, don't need a lot, just a dab. Put it back. Um, things like kitchen knives, really good for that as well, okay? So just polish up that edge. Try and remember to keep things flat on the back. Check your angle on the front. Craig, how are we doing? Yeah, just a, a quick point from Paul. He's asked, uh, at some point, would it be possible to show carving gouges, uh, convex and concave spoke shape blades sharpening as well? Okay. 
now I've got to think of where we are. So, so internal gouge in canal, did it say, or just Car carving? Carving gouge. Then we'd have to get so let's see if I can find a spoke shave I'm after to show you. I don't know where it is. Okay. Talk about duck and dive around the bench. Okay. Now, the carving gouge isn't easy to do today. Just the fact I don't have carving stuff in here. Okay. Spoke shaves. And you said concave. Okay. This is something that these are new actually, all right? We just got these back in. Um, Clifton spoke shapes. I own two of these at home, concave and convex. All right, these are the ones we're using here. Uh, I've used on the chair seats quite a lot. I'm gonna get the blade out, okay? So bear with me, it's a little bit fiddly. I need to take that one, all right? So these are Clifton, these are made in the UK. This is the blade, all right? How do you sharpen that? And other people come in and go, oh, what would you do with this? Now, if you've got the opposite profile, you could, if you need to grind it or sharpen it, you could use, or even with this, if you like, you could use the stick down blue abrasive we use for the scary sharpening, the Hermes abrasive, bond it down to a board, but you need to cut your shape. My way of sharpening this to make life a little bit easier, instead of sharpening what you think you're going to sharpen as long as you don't dent this or chip the edge and it needs a touch up not a total restore like we did to our flame blade and you don't freehand sharpen it and it's a spoke shape so actually as long as it's sharp it's not quite as critical as your hand plane maybe what can we do okay if you define the word sharpness <laughs> it is the act of coming together of two ground points what are those two ground points? Okay. One there. Okay. Front edge or the underside. One here. So the coming together of those two angles, that is how you could define the word sharpness. Now, I'm going to struggle to sharpen. Then can we go to two for me, please? That. Okay? Because it rolls a lot. I've got to get it angry. And to try and push this up and down, be awkward. You could do, like I said, the scary sharpening technique of the blue stick down abrasive, put it into a shape former that you might cut with this and then drag it towards you if you need to do something on the edge. What you might find easier, though, if you have something this kind of shape, I polish the front edge where we are now. Four, Ben, sorry. Okay. Nice shiny, isn't it? Okay. All right. Looks pretty good there. Got quite a glow, quite a reflection. Okay. So does look all right. Now we've got that pen line that gives you an indicator. So what we're now going to do, you go back to here. All right. We've got our thousand gritty bend. You can go overhead. Look. Shiny bevel edge I polished up. Back edge. Thousand grit. Don't need to actually attack that beveled edge. I can sharpen the flat back edge up to a point. Take a little bit of material for here. Okay. So, a tiny bit more. Let's have a flush. Okay. Um, so going back to your carving tools as well, yes, we'll look at that in a few weeks' time. I've even got the Ultimate Edge Grinder and a polisher. We're going to possibly look at that. Okay. I think Ben's possibly got a carving thing coming up. We're going to look at All right, So we will we will get to that. All right. So many things to sharpen is the problem. Okay. So we've taken a bit of metal. I don't know if we can see it. There you can. See that line on the, along the front there? Yeah, there. Lovely look. Okay. Taking a little bit of material off of there. I'm just going to turn my sharpening station around because I'm right handed. A compound. I could use any of these actually. Let's go with that. I'm going to bring that up onto there. Quite nice. Right on. Coarse side of this. All right. I want to polish that up. Now, this being flat, as long as I'm careful, I can go back and forwards, keep my pressure. 
Okay. If we want to do here, which we need to do a bit, we're only polishing. We're not going to distort too much. Pull it towards me. One side done. This is final one here. See how it feels. Okay. Work around it. Now I'm hoping. All right. I'm going to end up with no hairs by the end of the day. I can see it. Okay. So we can shave all that. So you don't have to attack that edge that everyone would assume. That makes sense. Everyone seems to think you've got to sharpen the beveled angle, but actually you can do the back. So even this is the opposite shape of this, the convex, you'd sharp the back. I wouldn't attack the front because you're going to deviate off of that shape too much. All right. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea on there. Okay. The lever stop, really important part to use. It buffs it up, polishes it, get rid of that minute piece of wire edge. If not, it floats about. You snap it off, you're getting little teeth left behind, if you like, because you're breaking it. We're polishing it right down to a nice clean surface, so you should get something that gives you... Can we go to four, Ben? Sorry. Something for a mirror. Okay? It gives you the idea of what I've done to these in the past. Okay? All right, that's just polishing, right? Honing, right? Leather strop. Polishing compounds. A really important part if you want to get things to work. And definitely with carving tools. I will polish up to a polished edge on the back. If you leave a ground edge on the back of a carving tool, it won't glide through the work. Okay? That makes sense. It, it, there's resistance from those scratches. So that polishing, quite an important part. Hope you've enjoyed this. I think we've used pretty much up on the bench. You've got your strops, your blue compound, your diamond stone, a whole load of stuff. Hopefully, the wider sharpening station, you can see why I kind of like this. It is fantastic if you're going out on site, you want to throw it in the back of the van, it's there, ready to go when you want to touch stuff up. I wish I'd had one when we were fitting kitchens because once we damaged something on site, it went back in the tool bag until we got back to the workshop, and then I had a restore session. Would it be nicer to touch things back up out on site? For those of you guys that I get someone else to sharpen it on Saturday, could you learn to do it? Touch things up, do your own little job. Some of you got your home DIY projects on the go. You want a sharp chisel to recess that door hinge in or sharp your hand plane to fit the door. Such an easy way of going. Takes all the guesswork out of it. Makes life simple, repeatable, and gives you a sharper cutting edge. So hopefully that's been informative for the afternoon. Thanks for joining us. We will see you again next week. Woodworking Wisdom, Tuesday. We've got Colwyn back in the turning room. Thank you all very much. All right.